Right now, I'm in the bathroom of the hotel. I'm in the I was on the poolside asleep when the security just wake me up right out of my sleep. My heart skip around a thousand feet. Teacher, they got to tell me to leave the hotel. I'm frightened, you know? No, she just looked at me and said, Boy, it look like you have a rough night. I said, Yeah, and then I don't know what she disappeared. I took a deep breath and tried calming my nerves. I tried my best to see if I could get some sleep. But I kept thinking that somebody else would have come come wake me up. Mine was racing fast. So it's 3 24 in the morning. I'm outside here. It's cold. I'm a Kiang about to sleep. Like the security wake me up like 3 o'clock. How about the pool side though? The place is dripping cold, man. Let's try for some more sleep. I don't know when I drop asleep, but when I wake up, the sun was just starting to rise. I did just feel good to make it through the night. It's all safe we can get. Yeah, my teeth brushed up, wash my face, and use the bathroom and all that jazz. It's your cell. It was good. Grab my stuff from the pool here and was walking to the restroom when I see a lady walking straight up to me. I start getting nervous, but then she just walk right past me. Jeez, I'm I quickly ran to the restroom, tap a kidney, brush my teeth, and then wash my face, and I was good to go. I quickly start to walk through the lobby straight towards the exit when something amazing caught my eye. First, Mr. The Pine, then Mr. Kane, then Mr. Melon. Oh Lord, them did even have Kiwi. I stopped in my tracks, relax a little, and decide for have a seat. My first thought was, was this food for everybody, or was it just for the people I'm staying at the hotel? I watched as more food kept coming out. And while watching the food, you know, I started to feel a little uneasy. I was about to leave and then I remember my phone needed to chat. Breakfast looking so damn good. And one of the servers them looked at me and said breakfast was ready. <laughs> I never needed to hear nothing more. From steam kalaloo, salt mackerel, to akia salt fish, to even scrambled eggs. It all looked so good. I couldn't wait to dig it. Took a deep breath, slowly expand the space in my stomach. I was about to demolish this food like what category Six hurricane would have demolished a small island. Load up my plate with salt, mackerel, ake, kalaloo, and all the ground provisions one could have found. And of course, it wouldn't be complete without some fruit on the side. Meal one was done, and I was ready for seconds. I noticed something strange, and it caught my eye. Brushed the thought aside and continued eating my walnut, raised a cinnamon, sugar, oats, porridge. Then it happened, the server came up to me and asked me what room I was in and he wanted my room number. I started getting nervous and some random numbers come out of my mouth and that's when it hit me. The food was not free. It's a shame, watch me and start knocking down the fruits them like it was my last meal and I was depending on them to survive. Make sure you subscribe though because we're at 2,000 but we want to get to 100,000 subscribers. I did a beat out on my chest. The fruits them, they feel like they made the heart to swallow. My nerves was at a hard time high. I just start pack up everything. I try to figure out how I can get out of this. One of the staff members them start walk over to me. And as I sit my bag, me here she say, everything okay, you enjoy the meal. I quickly tell her it was good and then grab my bag. I don't know if it's shame or embarrassment, but one of them give me the strength for poor walk right through the exit. I hold my head straight and I was so embarrassed. I proud myself after this challenge that I would have go back to AC and pay that bill. But for now, I really couldn't look back. It was now 8.30 on a Sunday and I had no clue how to get from where I was to St. Elizabeth. As I exit the hotel, I noticed a group of young men and they were all wearing vests. I had no idea what was going on. Yeah. Oh, I know they made the responsible for hydrate around them and some other stuff. And the general them offered me a bag of Gatorade water. And at first I tell him no, but then I actually accept it. And it's a good thing I did. Yellow water. Yes, sir. After the man them pack up the water on the table, I see a truck pull up. And I don't know, but some self asked him which direction them was going. And it turns out they was going the same direction I was. So you know what I'm going to do? I just jump on the truck. Where they was heading was going to be much closer to my destination. Yo, this is what? I'm going to get my space on park. And then from this, I'm going to get some truck. No, so. Says Elizabeth, here I come. As the truck moved, we kept picking up barrels and buckets along the way. And to tell you the truth, I was enjoying myself. As simple as it was, just helping out the man and man just vibing on the truck. It felt good. Who would have thought of all places I would have been on a Sunday morning? He's heading into New Kingston in the back of a truck. Best believe. I cannot make these things up. One of my first ever summer job was working on a biscuit truck. And I remember going from place to place and I was excited. Because at the time I was a youth, I never used to interest it to go nowhere. But on the truck it was fun because it made me see a lot of different places. In and around Jamaica. As the truck rolled into New Kingston, I felt excited. I haven't ridden on a truck in years. And the man them was so chill. Two twos, I was at Emancipation Park. 
blessed up the Monday, man, it was time to continue the journey. It was now 9 o'clock. I've made it. Um, apparently, there's a 4K happening. My bag of water, my belly full. Since I was in the park, I decided to look around a little bit before I continue my journey. Although I see one and two tent, the event did practically done. On my way out of the park is when I realized man, I don't really have no money. Plus, I'm only at $500. After buying that swirls the night before out of the $1,000, I mean, normally they have like probably $600 left. Just wasn't enough to pay my bus fare for go downtown plus for go St. Elizabeth. I had to make the hard decision of asking people again for money. I put my bag on my back, had a seat, and I did just that. Yeah, I'm to have $100 on you. Alright. I should ask somebody and, and get it for me. Wait. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Oh, look at that. You're yeah, one of the things that I'm just amazed with this challenge is just how kind people are, man. Not having them ask somebody, it's it's so cool, man. It, it is so refreshing to see. Oh, brother, I'm to have $100. Thank you, no brother. Thanks, yeah. <laughs> Respect. Thanks, man. I left you with 50. <laughs> but you're good, though. After raising up a thousand dollars, I was confident that I had enough. So I quickly jumped on the first bus I see and started to make the journey downtown. Although some people might say downtown not safe, I have never had a problem going downtown. But today was a Sunday and I could see that the place was not as busy as it usually is. I ask a man for direction as him and him point in the direction of the big tree and tell him to walk straight down. Although I don't have a problem with going downtown, I still wasn't taking any chances. Yes, people I know I have my camera out. Not sure where I would have laid my head, I bought a rag and I also bought a soap. Hundred dollar, that's good. And then I saw the bus park where I was supposed to take the bus. I looked around but no St. Elizabeth bus. The sweat was pouring off my back and I asked this man, yo, where the St. Elizabeth bus there? Only for the man tell me no straight bus to St. Elizabeth no on a Sunday. No St. Elizabeth bus, but there is a one where you pass through St. Elizabeth or either that or I'm taking a Mandeville one. At the same time, I saw Chinika only for her to give me some bad news. Santa Cruz, a thousand dollars? No, that's Santa hearts. Cruz that would pass through St. Elizabeth was a thousand dollars. And I only had eight hundred and fifty dollars. My head start hurt me. The bus was about to leave. And I didn't have a dollar more. I jumped up and asked as much people as I could if they had a hundred or fifty dollars. And after getting a hundred, eventually I reached a thousand. And I ran with all my might until eventually I caught the bus. The only problem now is that I don't know how I'm going to make it out in St. Elizabeth with no money. 